go. Pray for the Haiti, you okay? I'm doing very good. Thanks, I mean, I hope you're good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Um, welcome to Offline Outpost Review. Um, this is the very first one we're going to do on um, Instagram Live. Yes. So I thought I would just, um, first of all, thank you for coming on. Thank you for your time. And um, even though I had a short notice, you decided to come on. Um, I do appreciate this. So um, how have you been? How is everything down in Mexico? Uh, you know, um, at these unprecedented times where the coronavirus is um, is going on, uh, how are you doing? Well, I think I'm I'm doing very very good. Um, once again, thank you for for hosting me. I think I'm, I'm this is the first time I'm doing this. Um, uh, my first okay. course. Um, I might be doing it um, regularly now. Um, okay. Well, I think okay. it's it's not it's not too bad here. It's been it's been good, you know, because you know. Um, uh, our club took the safety precautions earlier, so I've been home for I think three weeks now, and I think okay. things are a bit here, yeah, a, a bit cool here. Okay, that, that that's good. How has it sort of um, impacted the league over there? I mean, and how are the players taking it? Um, just just a brief overview of what exactly is going on, and how 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 is everyone taking it generally in Mexico? Well, I think for now it's, it's a bit serious, you know. Earlier, I think uh, even our last in our last game, um, Club Pretaro, we played our last game. Um, we went away. We we lost. I think we lost. We, we lost that game. But then we played on Friday. So you know we played with our fans. But then I think the the association got um, they got a bit of um, the news. You know it it's wasn't too yeah yeah. So the Sunday Saturday games were played behind closed doors. So, you know, I think that's how it's going. But then now, it's serious now. The cases are more now in Mexico. So I think um, um, it was it was better they, they, they allowed us to stop the league. But then I think the players are taking it cool because they know um, the health is, is, is more important than, than anything. So um, Okay, fantastic. Okay, well We'll come back to that in a bit. Well, I thought I would just go through with you, um, with your career. Um, you know, if you can just talk us through how you came into limelight um, from, you know, uh, from going to the Under-20 World Cup, or maybe a bit of things prior to that, and then we can talk through that and just, you know, just what has the, has the journey been, really, what's it been like for you, uh, you know, football generally? Well, it, it hasn't been easy. Um, my, I think I'll start from... And then a 20 World Cup, that's where I think I got the, you know, the recognition. A lot of people got to, got to know me in the world. Um, but then before I went to that World Cup, I had already signed for Udinese. That's what a lot of people don't know. Um, okay. First, I signed for Udinese. It was like a pre-contract because I wasn't 18 years yet. Um, and then okay. you know, they were paying me at, at the age of 17 years. So, you know, they were, they were paying me. I was in Ghana. I used to go to Udine in Italy to train with the team and then, you know, two months, three months and I, I went there for two times. Um, so that, that, that was how the journey started. But then, you know, um, I got the invitation to the, to the under 20. When I was in Interlice, we played a friendly game against the, the national under 20 who were already in camp. They were preparing for the African Cup. And the coach, Celasteter, who... We all know he's 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 done great for for Ghana, the first African coach to to win the then a twenty World Cup. You know, um, he saw me and then he 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 was in love with me and then he invited me to come. So I think that's that's where it started. So we went for the African Cup. Things went very well, and so I got the selection into the the final. I think twenty two months quite for the. For the World Cup, so I think that's okay. where it, it all started. You know, we went to Turkey, the African Cup. I think we played it in in Egypt. Yeah, we were we were, we were second place. It was very. What year was this? That was in twenty thirteen. Okay, same year. Okay, early, just prior to the World. Yeah, early twenty thirteen. So you know, it was just the preparation. Okay. After the World Cup, we went to Italy. We played some couple of friendly games, and then you know, we were, we were preparing for the World Cup. I was in Turkey. I think that's where my breakthrough came. Um, even though I signed mm -hmm. for Udinese, um, 
a lot of people didn't know. So people thought probably um, after the World Cup, um, I got, I I went to Granada. But in Granada and then Udinese, you know, they are they are like a twin. Yeah, they, yeah, twin, they have the same owners. Yeah, so um, they just okay. looked at my, my type of game and then they told me, okay, yeah, you, you, you have good qualities, yeah, you have the technique. So we think you can make it in Spain, you can develop in Spain more than in Italy. So um, that's how I went to Granada. But the thing is, after the after the World Cup, did you get a lot of like teams coming up to you? Like after the after the World Cup, did you have new teams coming up? Of course, of course. You know, winning the the, the third best player in, in this tournament. You know, I know. Mm. I remember their clubs like Dortmund, Manchester City scouts were around who were interested. Even clubs from the Arab United Arab Emirates, I remember, who wanted to pay some money. You know. But then, like I'm saying, I signed for Odinese. I had not even played my first official game, you know. And then, so mm. they, I, I don't think they were ready to risk. To, to risk? You know, not, so even, not, is... not to even sell me, you know, because um, I, I, already, I turned 18 years not long ago. So, you know, I had to play. Um, you know, they had to watch me develop and all that. So, so they weren't in a hurry to, to sell me or... You know, people people, people like, have, yeah. have a, a different story altogether about this this mm. after World Cup thing. You know, I had a lot of clubs who wanted to to sign me after this, but then it, it was impossible. You know. Yeah, okay. I, I see someone someone mentioned Igalo. I don't know if yeah, yeah, Igalo I think is it, there. I think it, uh, I think it joined. You know, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. I think. I, yeah. Because it, you, you had Igalo. You, a teammate at some point were you yeah you know you guys um, he's my senior yeah. you know he's my senior you know he's um i met him in, in udine i remember the, when i was just what i said you know when i was 17 years i met him in, in in the hotel in italy i remember very well even at the training grounds but then also when i came mm. to granada you know he was also there so um yeah, yeah. so he's, okay he's, he's a big inspiration you know Okay, I was just going to say, for, for a lot of people that don't know, uh, 2013 World Cup in Turkey for under 20. Um, can you just run us through the people that, you know, because that's the same competition that Drogba was in, you know. Um, you won the bronze ball. So talk us through who were the people that were in front of you. Yeah, you know, um, I think that, that that World Cup had a lot, of, a lot of big players, you know, players who were already playing in the Champions League, who were playing in La Liga, who were playing in... The English Premier League, you know, it, uh, the Italian Serie A. I think Pogba won the 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 first place, the best player, and then the yeah. second, the silver silver ball was won by Nicolas Lopez, who is now playing Mexico too. You know, he's he's in Tigres, yeah. club Tigres. Yeah, huh? he he was from. Are you? Uh, I think he's from Argentina. He's some of some 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 from South America. Europe, Europe. Europe, yes, he's from Europe. Uruguay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. You know, I met him too in in Granada. You know, I played with him in Granada okay. too. So, um, yeah. And then I think they, there were likes like uh, there were players like um, Jesse Rodriguez from Spain. For me, I think okay. my favorite team was Spain. You know, because uh, yeah. yeah, they had they had a lot of players like Rodriguez, Oliver Torres. Um, yeah, mm. yeah, they had they had they had they had. Uh, a lot of good players, but then you know, France too had. I think for France, they were like the, I don't know. That was a very tough team. Classic. Park, you know? yeah. That was a very tough team. Their first eleven were players who were very experienced. You know, <clears throat> they had imposed the. Uh, what's what's his name? PSG. I think he's now in, in Madrid. He just signed for Madrid. I've forgotten his name. He won the best goalkeeper. He was he won the best goalkeeper of the tournament. Um, they had Fokir, who was playing for their right back. Lucas Digne, formerly Barcelona, who is now playing in is it Everton. Um, okay. They had central defense. They had Samuel Samuel Umtiti of Barcelona. Suma, wow. former for, formerly of Chelsea. I don't know where he's playing now. In the oh, Zuma, 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 yeah, Zuma. I don't know okay. if he's playing Chelsea. In the midfield, they have Condovia, mm. and of course, Condovia, who I think is in Sevilla. I don't know if he's moved. And then they have Paul Pogba. 
in the midfield. Yes. Yeah. These two giants, you know. Um, so I face, <laughs> I face these two giants. And then even the, the central defense, look at Suma and then Umtiti. You know, they were all like big players. Top players. Top, players. top yeah. notch. Sure, sure, top, sure. top, top, top. Yes. I and was privileged like to see to okay. see them play in the World Cup in um, Russia. You know, I saw a couple of their games, and they, they really. I think France have that thing about their recruitment is always they, they they used to get it wrong a long time ago, but I think shortly before they, they won the first World Cup, they started doing the right things and ticking the right boxes, and then they started. You know, their recruitment. Yeah, at some point they went you know, deep, you know, they sort of faltered, but they, they, they keep coming back time and time again to, to sort of make things work. I was just going to ask you, do you, are you still in touch with the likes of Pogba and the other guy now? Are you guys still, do you still talk from time to time? Yeah, you know, Pogba is, is not, you know, he's not, he's not my friend, but then, of course, yeah. if, if we get to meet, you know, I know we'll, we'll share good memories. With, with Nico, yeah, yeah. Once in a while, you know, we, I don't have his number, but then on, on Instagram, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes they just... Yeah, sometimes, sure. yeah, yeah. Pogba is, is a funny guy because now um, Igalo is in um, Manchester, <laughs> you know. And yeah. um, I mean, Pogba is, 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 a, is a very, very funny person. He's a jovial person. He just wants to have fun. But, but then um, that's just football then. So um, after the World Cup, you ended up going to Udinese. And what are the sort of tough times you had? What were the good times? You know, did, did things play out the way you expected them to go? Or how, how were things like? Well, I think in, in, in Odini, in Odin, I had it a bit difficult, you know. Um, I had gone to trials in countries like Holland and Belgium. I didn't keep that long. But then I think mm. I, I found it difficult in, in Odini because I, I remember okay. in my early stages, it was, it was very cold, you know. Fighting, yeah, like, coming from fighting. Africa, getting to these countries to survive, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit difficult. And at that, at that age, I was only 17 years. The food to us um, was, I had, I had a tough time with, with the food. You know, you, you have to get used to the life of eating pasta. And, you, know, you know, we are not used yeah. to this kind of food in Africa. So, But then, you know, I think it's part of the learning process and um, the language. Yeah. Getting to communicate with the, with the players. Um, in Udini, I had a coach that um, speak English, so you know I didn't get it too difficult. But then you know, getting to communicate with the other players, I think there were some other African players in the second team. Mm. Um, there was one one Senegalese guy who, but then you know he speaks French. He doesn't speak English. Um, but I think I was lucky. I had also Ajman Badu, Ajman Badu, who was playing in the, in the senior team. Um, He's Ghanaian, and so you know, sometimes I used to go to his house, he invites me, and then even as a trainer, I used to communicate with him. So I think that was that was some of the barriers, you know, some of the difficult times I had. But it's part of the learning mm -hmm. process, like I'm saying. Um, it is, getting it is. back to Spain, um, where I settled, you know, where I started my career, if I should say, in, in Granada, I think. Yeah. So they first, sorry, sorry to cut you short, did they first loan you to Granada, then they made it permanent because that's usually the. Yeah, 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 you know well, how was it? The, okay, it was a loan. It was still, it was still a loan. You know, I, I was playing in Granada's loan, but like, I'm, yeah. you know, it was a one year loan, and then they got to see yeah, I'm doing good, so um, they left me there on a permanent deal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But then you know, it's, okay. it's, like I'm saying, you know, they are, they are, they are like, they're the same owners, so I don't think yeah. it, it was any difficult deal for them. Yeah. It was, yeah. So what what now made you um, finally leave Spain for Mexico? Um, yes, um, I think I was I was in Spain for almost four years. Um, in my early in my first year, you know, I, I trade. I, I even play in my first year when I was eighteen years. I used to play with them in the nineteens, and then um, I used to train with the with the second team. You know, so that was my first year. So I used to play with them in the nineteens and then train with the second team. Um, it went very well, you know. They got to know my my level was in was in, to play in the nineties and like anytime I, I go and play there, I was like um, it was an easy game for me, you know. But then you know in Spain and you know in these countries, they 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 trust in the process, you know. They like you to um, to develop. I was just 
even though mm. I, had, I had won the third best player in the World Cup and the bronze ball, but then, you know, it doesn't work like that in, in, in Europe. A lot of people Absolutely. don't have Absolutely. that mentality. <clears throat> they wanted mm. to go through the process because you, you need to develop, you know. Um, not to cut it short, I would like to just clear something here. You know, people used to compare most of the African guys that win. Um, let's say, like like my case, I won a bronze ball, and then OCA. Hey, look at where you are. Look at where Pogba is. But then, come on, Pogba was playing Champions League before he came to the World Cup. Um, mm -hmm. He's already developed in Europe. And then, I'm I'm, I'm just a, um, a player coming from Africa. I wasn't even playing yeah. Premier Premier League in Ghana. You know, I was my team had we, we just qualified to the Premier, and then I had little little experience. You know, so. Mm -hmm. That was what happened. I think, I, I think um, that, that you, you know, there's a lot of things that, like you've mentioned as well, with the process of coming to the Afri from Africa, the food, the culture, the people that can put you through. And sometimes it's really, really difficult. Sometimes you get lucky break. You know, sometimes things go up and down, but you were able to grind and find, a, uh, you know, some sort of way. And um, even though, other players have gone elsewhere your, your own way. I mean, you have to be grateful for, for being a footballer, for, for having a career. And um, what I love, we don't even understand in football as well, there's a lot of different things, underlying factors that can make um, a decision go A or B. For instance, um, if you hadn't signed for Udinese before going to the World Cup, you might have been elsewhere. Because he, he, a lot of Africans and a lot of African administrators and a lot of footballers, do not actually know what it takes to um, when it comes to in terms of um, um, what the process is, process in terms of how players move from A to B, what they need to do to any compensation. We still have a lot of, we have a long way to go in Africa. Of you course. know, the, 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 the training, the understanding, the perception, you know, different things has to do, especially with our administrators. We have to learn, we have to evolve to teach kids from an early age. We have to start getting kids as long, as young as like, at the utmost, we have, a, 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 we have players that we look after in the academic system. You're we surprised that they started playing football from like age five. Oh, that's, that's so when you, have a, when you have a young player that starts playing from age five, you have the opportunity to go and train with Arsenal, with Chelsea, with KPR, you know, just different clubs. So by the time when they get to eight or nine, they will, they're beginning to understand where they want to go to. That, that is and true. then they stay in, yeah, then they stay in the system. Then they start giving them, you know, uh, contracts, you know. By the time they turn 15 now, that's when they tell them, okay, we're going to give you what is called color, like a scholarship. So you get a scholarship towards December of the year when you're 15. So by the time you turn 16, you have scholarship. You start getting paid. Yeah, that's, that's know, great. You have that's the great. responsibility. You know, so from the age of 16 to 18, most times, so let's say sometimes, some players know they're going to be pro when they're 17. But by 18, most times, if you've gone through the academy ranks, you already know where you stand. So imagine someone that started from age five, had gone through the ropes, had known everything. It's different from someone that's coming from Africa. And of course, we know all the things that, you know, people in yeah, Africa yeah. expect. Like, yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, just go to riches, everything is easy, but you kind of, you know, the climate, the food, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this yeah, is what yeah. I try and explain to some of the players that I look after yeah. in the UK and around the world. I say, listen, you guys are privileged because you've been in the system for a long time. But when you have players that come from Africa, they don't have the privilege you guys have. They need to grind like 10, 20 times more, you know. So it's, it's a thing we have to keep learning and I keep talking and people like you when you talk about things like this it's really, really inspiring because i know there's a couple of people that'll be you know happy uh, hearing from you and to hear your side of the thing of the yeah, story of course you know but, so now that you're in mexico do you do you think would you like to play in europe if the opportunity arises of, of course of course that's something we can make happen at some point of course of course um, you know um I know it's possible, you know, I need to work hard. Um, you know, actually, the, you know, the plan was, I think we didn't, we didn't end from, from the Granada part. Um, I stayed in Granada for almost four years, you know, and, and 
you know, I got to have my debut in, in the senior team. I think my debut game was against Sevilla in the Copa um, del Rey. Granada mm. got new owners. I think the Chinese guys came to take over. So it was no more, you know, the, I think the Odinese the guys didn't have the, the shares anymore. So like, um, you know, those are those are things about football. You need to, like, yeah. yeah, you need to you need to get your way out. And then at that moment, you know, even in the second team, there was a coach, a new coach who, who brought in his new players. And then, you know, I, I didn't get all the attention from from the coach. And you know, I was mm -hmm. I was the best player in the, in the second team. And then a new coach comes in, and then he was like, "Hey, come on! I think your level is too much for for this category. You need to you need to step step up." You know. And then I was getting mm. a whole lot of problems with them. And at that moment, that was the only um, offer on the table. Um, yeah. Alone, okay. Okay. Alone um, with an option. But then for me at that time, you know, my my aim was to come to Mexico playing. The, you know, Mexico, I think, is, is a very tough league. I did a, a bit of um, investigation did about, did about the league. Um, so my aim was to come here, get my playing time, and then um, get the experience and then i know i can i can go back to europe mm -hmm. yes but then yes it's been so far so good here in atlas i think i have good memories in atlas and well mm -hmm. i'm still an atlas player i'm, I'm on loan here in Keretaro, but then, mm -hmm. um, it was a very good year for me um they they they, they got the option they bought me and then i stayed permanently you know so that that's how it ended so when does your loan end now um with the club um, where you're at uh, in, now in Keretaro is ending in May, but they are, they have okay. the option too. So let's see. It's been so far so good. Like you know, yeah. how many games? Fun. How many assists? Um, I don't have the exact games. I think um, last season was eighteen. This season, I think we played about ten games. So like, let's say twenty-eight games when I came here, and wow. I've, I've played in all the mm -hmm. games. Well, in in the league games, but then I think cup matches are out. Um. But then I think I've played about 28 games in all. And I've played in all the games since I came. Uh, That's good. So just imagine yeah, it's been so far so good here in Keretaro. So, I mean, so, but another thing I would like to ask you is, I mean, right, right now, based on your experience, having come from Africa, um, gone to Europe, gone to the World Cup, you've had, you know, we've been, you've been with about, is it yeah, three teams right now, four teams? Um what do you think you can impact in other footballers from Africa? What are you looking to give back or what are you doing right now? Because for me, personally, I'm, uh, I'm a fan of, you know, giving back resources. It doesn't have to be monetary. Whatever it is, your knowledge, your understanding, because we have to talk our stories. We have to help the next generation. I've seen cases of footballers, for instance, that, you know, they've come from Africa and um, they did well in Europe. And at some point, things didn't go well. They had to go back to Africa. But because they didn't have anything back there, they hadn't invested in maybe the, the, the club they came from or the community where they were training, it was hard for them to pick things back up. And I've seen players that was what they did back in Africa when they were playing in Europe that helped them to shoot back when their career had a dip and they went back. So for what, what are you looking to do? You know, because I know you're Ghanaian. You know, personally, yeah. I would like to see in the Ghanaian national team at some point because it's still possible. Sure. The thing is, what, what what are you looking to do or what have you been doing back home in Ghana or in football generally just to sort of help the younger generation of or just, just help help out in a way? Well, I think in football, um, for, for me, I, I don't think um, I could ever go out of football. You know, I have mm. I have this team, Zinaf FC, and that's why I, 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 my coach team where I, 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 you know, I graduated to into our lives. Um, you know, I've always had this passion for for these guys. Normally, I'm not a guy who, who will be showing everything that I'm doing back home, you know. But then mm -hmm. um, I, I help them a lot. I have these plans of, you know, helping a lot of the guys who are, they are young talents in Africa. Like, you know, like uh, I go back and then I watch their games. Um, sometimes they send me their videos and then I know, I can do a lot to help. Um, mm -hmm. So, of course, like, you know, now, being as a young player, you know, as a young players, helping them to come to Mexico, mm -hmm. normally what they will say is, hey, come on, 
I'm, I'm starting my my I'm I'm about to start my career and also why should I come to Mexico? Because mm-hmm. of course I might mm-hmm. have other connections, you know, in Europe and all that. But then, um, I think I'm now in Mexico. So for me, I would I would love most of the boys, even though it's you know it's a it's a, it's a long journey, you know. Yeah, helping yeah. helping boys of fifteen years, fourteen years to come to Mexico is a long journey. But then you know yeah. I'm still planning of helping most of the boys. Um, um, to 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 be able to fulfill their you know their dreams, a lot of them yeah, have the talent. I, mm, a lot of them have the talent. I mean, they don't, they don't have anybody to help them. Um, yeah. So for me, I think the kind I, of thing. Mm, I, sorry, go on. Go on. Yeah, yeah, go on, come. On. Yeah, there's kind of things I'm really talking about. Well, that I'm more interested in is you know, for some of these guys, they need somebody to speak to them. To give them the experience, because if you're not prepared, or you're not knowledgeable by the time you leave your home country to go elsewhere, it's going to be a disastrous journey. So the kind of things in terms of how you know what football is all about, once in a while, if you know their jerseys, their boots. In fact, talking to footballers, some of the people that I know personally, you know, because I go, I get to go to different parts of Africa to scout. When I go and I talk to them and I tell them certain things, they be like, "Wow." Years back, I think about five years ago, I went to somewhere in Lagos to do a scouting um, job. And um, some, Oregon, in particular, uh, Lagos. And they had people that they would dribble, they would do different. Those are people they were hailing. But after the game, I told them there was a guy there that he had a good, uh, he had good movements, he could shoot. I didn't do too much, you know. And I said to them, this is the best guy here. They were looking at me like, are you crazy? I said, that's your best man. You don't need to dribble too much. You don't need to, do, you just need to do the basics. Hold on to the ball. Don't lose the ball. You know, pass on, pass the ball when you're supposed to pass. And if you get a chance score, if you can assist, assist. But they didn't know that. Yeah. They, they were really, really shocked. I think about six months when I left, I got a call from somebody that that guy was a Malta. But somebody else saw him. So I think the awareness, lack of their awareness and knowledge in our football, because in Africa, we have very, very skillful footballers. You don't need to teach a lot of people how to be skillful. The skill is there naturally. That is it. But the basics, the technicality, that you know, and the nuance of what to do at the right time. You know, some people, they, they make passes and then they want to take pictures. They just stay there. They don't know how, you know, they don't know what to, what scouts you're looking for or agents or clubs because a lot of people have been to trial abroad for like five or six times. They keep coming back. They'd be like, oh, somebody did it. But they don't actually know what it takes. So since people like yourself, if you can enlighten, you know, the younger generation and have things back home, you know. Uh, we're, we're, we're definitely going to do a couple of things uh, with players and people in Ghana anyway. Um, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. You know, yeah. because um, Ghanaian players, you know, Ghanaian players, uh, uh, I think most times they don't get enough recognition that, you know, they, that they deserve. Yeah. Well, the the Ghanaian players that I know personally, they're very very hardworking, very skillful, you know. But you know, when countries like Nigeria come on, on the, you know, on the scene or Cameroon or Cote d'Ivoire, you know, but Ghana has its own, you know. There's a lot of talent. <laughs> it, in Ghana. There's a lot, a, too many. a lot of talent. You know, probably if for me in Africa, if you're talking about Nigeria, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, you know, we know we know the. They have the best, you know, strikers, the best defenders. But then come on. They have more numbers. The yes. numbers is the, the thing sometimes, you know. Because Nigeria are almost a million. But and Ghana is not. The Ghanaian, the typical Ghanaian footballer is, is very talented, you know. There's a lot of talent, mm. you know. You know, we the, the Ghanaians have this special thing um, that, I don't know, but then the talent is there, you know. Normally, Definitely. If, even if, if you take a Ghanaian striker and then you compare a Ghanaian striker to maybe a Nigerian striker. A Nigerian striker has all the qualities, you know, strong, big, but then probably his technique wouldn't be like a Ghanaian striker. I don't know if you, if you get what I'm trying to say. I, uh, I, I get what you're saying. Yes. I, I, I definitely, but then, like you're saying, how to, how to um, improve and their nurse, quality, yeah. you know, how to put it into use and all that, you know, that, that, is, that is the main problem. So like you're saying, um, for me, I think, yes, um, I think we could we could work something out for most of the Ghanaian guys. You know, um, I know you are doing I know you are doing good, 
you are doing well I, like you are doing your best um, um in terms of for that I was in Ghana and, I was in Ghana in December we were supposed to see but then I think he yeah, left yeah, yeah. a couple yeah, of days before I got I was in Ghana for the Afro Nation and a couple of other businesses for about three days and it was it was really good I'm looking to go back there at some point sure. um I just wanted to ask you something briefly about Inter Alice as well because the name keeps popping up you know can you sort of yeah. talk us through you know what Inter Alice is all about in Ghana Yeah you know I think this this there's a very important team everybody is is you know um a short story I think I used to play in the second division I don't know the second division you know in Ghana we have second division first division for the premier you know so I okay. went from Zinaps that's the coast team I went to Italize and then I was playing the second division um you know we had a coach called Willy Kluche who was also he, I think he played in the nas- in the national team and he's very well recognized and he's a very good coach so you know they they saw me in this inter schools game when i was in senior high school so they called me um to internalize and then that's why it all started you know even my coach my coach coach didn't want to give give me to them because he was like hey clifford if it's not an if it's not a european team i'm not going to i'm not going to release clifford for you guys so, you know but then you know internalize is like it's more of like a stepping stone because you know they have the they have the connections you know and this there's a club mm-hmm. that organizes like two to three tournaments in a year they get scouts to come to Ghana to watch these players and then we need you know, to go i think we need to go to Italy and see when they you need to let me know when they're doing whatever course. it is that we can go course, there and yeah, see that, what we can be difficult at all you know and i got mm-hmm. a link my manager is Omar and then Roro um they are doing good um yeah they are now mm-hmm. in the premier league but then like i'm saying even the they invite most of the most of the clubs and then it doesn't matter if as your players if it is a scout that you know he sees another player from another club mm. yes come on why yeah. not um, i think they are doing good and they are helping more Ghanaian Ghanaian players to to be able to you know achieve their dreams to play outside the country okay so that, that's so... what they are more like you know a stepping stone because they have the connections mm. they they organize these tournaments and you know for me i when i was young i always i think like i i mentioned earlier i went to club heringen in 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 holland that was my first yes. time i traveled Tire. yes i think i was like 16 years by then and then i went to club rich for trials and you know before i sent for odinese i think i was even about to sign for club rich i didn't mention that to you okay You know when I was young people had always doubted about my my height you know like yeah, yeah. this guy is too small you know like this guy. so why should we invest in him but then I think I was lucky like we also mentioned about this you know we you always have to be grateful for where you are um, I think I got a very good contract from Udinese even before the World Cup and, and I'm grateful I, I think I want to thank my managers as of mine Rural of Indalis and um, I got mm. a good contract from Odinese at that age when I went for trials at Club Bruges I think the co- the coach was called to give his impressions about me and then immediately the coach entered into the the room he was like hey fantastic so the scout that is Patrick Mock who works with Odinese um he was there so he had to you know he has to make a straight call to Gino Pozzo and then that was it this is this so they they got me a better contract so okay. i knew who knows you know we no nobody knows what could have happened in the future i could mm. have signed for club bridge in, in belgium but then um i went for the odinese contract it was a better contract and then you know uh, mm. and that's it so uh, you know we need to be grateful sometimes from odinese Uh, absolutely that's, that's a bunch of experience you have right because, there yeah you know and back like, yeah. yeah 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 i have a lot of players all a lot of teammates that are still in ghana you know even in the national team i played with a lot of guys in the in the, in the world cup that most of them don't have mm-hmm. clubs now and then sometimes you know people will be like hey you you were the best player in the 20 <clears throat> look at where pogba is look at where you are now come on um Everybody has people I think 
everybody people start to question. You know, um, yeah, they own, they own yes, you know, well, who knows? Come on, um, yeah. I'm 25 years, I have a lot of years ahead of me, and absolutely. Absolutely, I mean the way you the way you move the ball in the midfield, you know the finesse. Personally, I, you know I like it, and that's why you're able to sort of do a lot of good things in places like in, in a country like Spain because that they, they don't care about the size, about you know how yes. big you are. It's about the technique, and I think in Africa as well we need to invest in how we train the youth, the technique, and the technicality of the game. You can see an African team; they play well. They dribble well, they do everything well, but the techniques are not there. The that basics. Is, that's that where is. the European counterparts, that's where, you know, they just sort of get one notch ahead of us. And and then, yeah. that's just it, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. you know, um, for me, I think who knows what it could have been, you know, even before the World Cup, before the African Cup, nobody knew about me. I was the only player who was, you know, in the World Cup, I was like, hey, all the players should, should be playing in the Ghana Premier League. I was the only player uh, or I yeah. think two of us were the only players who were like playing in the lower division. So Ghanaians didn't mm. even know about me. There were just a few, and then all of a sudden they start comp these comparisons. But then sometimes you know, hey, that's the media, you know, people who understand. I can football. see a lot, of, a lot of people in the comment section calling you Ortega. I remember yeah, yeah, that guy yeah, was yeah, a yeah. dead. Yeah, you know, that name, yeah. you know that name is you know people who know me from the yeah. roots, you know. Um, people who know mm. me from the roots, people who know me from my course time, you know, even before the World Cup. Yeah, so if you see anyone calling me that name, yeah, because you know that that name is coming from Ariel Ortega, that's the Argentine international. Yeah, yeah, I know. I remember him. I think he was at the Olympics '96. Yeah. I think he played against Nigeria. He was like, yeah, he was fantastic footballer, Argentine, fantastic footballer. Yes, yes, yes. You know, he was very. He, he wasn't also big. He was smallish. Yeah, I know him. Yeah. So, it, you know, yeah. my course coach, um, Zina Pape, his name is Francis Amate. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows him as Pape. You know, he's very good mm -hmm. at that. You know, he, he just sees a player and then he looks at the way you play and then he gives you a name. So, that's the mm -hmm. name he gave to me. And then it's, it's, it's been a name that people call me a lot. Um, that's what people know me. I mean, those who know me from the roots, from my course time, from my school yeah. time, GSS time, and, you know... Um, and you know, my mm. uh, number ten has been my favorite since I was young, and since I was, number ten has always been my my favorite number, and I think yeah. it's, it's still my favorite okay. number, you know. Up till now, do you wear number ten now? The club where you are? Yeah, sure, of course, of course, yeah. Okay, yeah, course, fantastic. Okay. So, what in a nutshell? What is your advice to the younger generation coming, or African players? You know, um, in terms of decision making, in terms of, you know. Um, style of football in terms of the lifestyle how, you know just just general advice for because people that look up to you you know the likes of people calling you a tiger right now you know they've seen you go go to the world cup doing great things what advice do you have for them you know because yeah, i know personally talent is not enough talent yeah. is never enough it's a whole lot of things. you know you need to do more. Things, you know um it's a whole lot of things i think it's a learning process um first of all i think discipline is, is the most important thing um, if you're not disciplined, of course, you, you can't make it. Um, there are a whole lot of players, you know, who are, who are who have made it out there, but then because it, they are not disciplined, you know, they can't they can they can't do it, you know. They can they can make it out there. So for me, discipline is key. Discipline is key because um, if you're not disciplined, you can't. I'm talking about um, your diet, your food. Um, because I know there are a lot of like, um, African African players who. When, when they travel outside the country, they can't survive because of food. And of course, we had one player in the national team. And I remember when we were in Switzerland, he, was, he wasn't feeling too strong because of, of the food. You know, he was missing the Ghanaian food. He couldn't eat all this salad and stuff, you know. So, of course, it's about discipline, you know. For me, I think discipline is key. Discipline is key. Yeah. Um, if you don't have discipline, you can't make it. Um, okay. But then I think the rest is it's a learning process. If if you if you go out there, I I'm, I think I left my country sixteen years. I remember when I went to, I think sixteen sixteen years I was traveling with my manager because I was very young. Wow. But then come on, seventeen eighteen you were living on your your own, um, living your country, getting to another country. If you are not disciplined, you can't make it, man. 
It's not easy. Yeah. No, it's you know like when when people, you know, I always say to you know, I have a lot of people come up to me, you know, parents especially. I want my kid to be a footballer. I want it to be this and that. The first thing I first tell them the negative sides, the pros. Are, you know, you have the pros and the cons. I remember, I think about three or so years ago, I was in Hong Kong and I had this friend of mine. And his family member, they came, they had a meeting with me, they wanted to do this and that. And I started telling them different things that, you know, footballers, you know, everybody believes footballers make a lot of money, which is true. But I said to them, somebody pays the footballer. You know, the footballer works for someone, the club owner or a group of shareholders, number one. Yeah. Then I said to them, you know, listen, at some point, a footballer goes through a deep, no matter how good you are, you will lose form at some point, you know. In football, there's depression. Sometimes the, the a new coach comes in, he doesn't start playing the footballer. Sometimes there's politics. There's so many things. Sometimes things just happen. And yeah. I'd be like, the, the people around the footballer, you know, the, your management team and the people, the, the core people around you that can keep you grounded and keep you as a normal person, they're the ones that can make your career nurture and help you as a person. The, I think the problem with a lot of footballers is they, they, they just hang around yes people, people that say yes to whatever they want to say. And that's why a lot, especially our brothers, you know, from, from Africa, they make yeah. that mistake. And I think we have to say this as well. You know, in Africa, you know, family sometimes, they give a lot of issues to footballers because every, everybody wants a piece of you. They, this one wants a car, that one wants a house. And sometimes, no matter what a footballer does, no matter what a footballer does, it's never enough. People just want to take and take and take. They don't give back. No yeah. moral support, nothing. So, so when, I, when I talk through a lot of things with people, they'd be like, wow. I'm like, all you see is the glitter and the glamour. You never see what goes on behind closed doors. They're footballers. Yeah. They can't even, they have, they, 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 when they go on flights, they're scared. There's a lot of yes. footballers. I know, this, I know footballers that are that, like that. Even yeah. I myself, I travel a lot different countries that sometimes I'll just be like, oh God, please. <laughs> just help. Yeah, when the yeah. plane starts doing something, you know, it's it's so many issues sometimes, you know. Um I know a footballer that was somewhere in Asia and they went, you know, on the plane for almost four hours, turbulence. Turbulence, you know, that kind of thing is is frightening. Yeah. You know, um, so it's different things like that. <laughs> you yeah, wanna say something? Yeah, um I just remember um, I remember one time I was coming from from Spain to to Ghana, you know, um, and then it was, mm. it was it was raining heavily, so we we, we didn't land in Ghana. We we landed in Benin, and you know I had to spend the night in Benin. I don't remember which flight it was. I don't know if it was. I don't remember exactly which flight. So you know, like I say, and all these things are factors. You know, your family. Sometimes you need to have a family that will support you. A family that will not be thinking about about what you're earning. You know, sometimes life yeah. helps you. Of course, um, if you're a footballer and then sometimes, you know, you, you, of course, going from Africa and then all of a sudden, imagine um, your first salary you start earning in Dallas, you know, or euros. Yeah. You know, mm. If you are very humble, your family, or if you are from a very humble family and you know how to yeah. hand, um, handle yourself, um, I think that that all those kind of things um, um, they are they are very important because um, come on, absolutely footballers keep earning. You know, we, you know, I, you, you keep earning better year by year. I think um, yeah, from twenty thirteen till now, of course, I've, I'm earning better. But then I don't. I try not to live all these lavish lifestyles. You know, for my family to get to know hey, this boy. You know. The young boy we knew now is 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 is, um, is now living this kind of lifestyle, you know. So that is what brings about the family trying Issues. to asking you money. And, but then, if from the beginning you 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 control yourself, you know, um, I'm, I'm 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 this is what I'm doing for the family, um, this is what I'm doing for the family. You know, you get a time they will not be worrying you too much about, um, yeah. because we all know. Um, we don't we don't need to spend a lot of money in Africa uh, because the currency the standard of living is not too high so he, I think you need to control all these kind of stuff you know of course mm. um if you're earning better your family needs to live better but then 
it doesn't mean um, you should be living all these lavish lifestyles and then just be spending money in there. You know? So tell us, do you, because I asked, you know, a lot of footballers this question. Um, after your, when you, I mean, you still, your career is still going on. You still have, you, you, you know, it's still far away from now. But do you ever think of when you stop playing football? What you're gonna go on to next? Have you thought of it, or do you, do you have an idea? You know, because we have some footballers going to school. Um, some after their career, you know, someone like Odewingi. I was speaking to him the other day. Um, we decided to go back to law to school. We wanted to do foundation in law and go back into law. He plays golf. You know, he wants to help footballers and people with contracts. Some people want to be coaches. Some want to be agents. Some want to have academies. So I just want to do something differently. What, what, what are your plans? You know, do you have any plans or is this something you've ever thought of? As yeah, of course, today? You, know, you know, this is something my, you know, my dad has always been, been asking me, you know, he, he has, even not now, you know, I think way back, this this is something he has always been worrying me about since I was in Spain, you know. Mm -hmm. hey, come on, you got to do something after football. Um, yeah, of course, you know, I'm thinking about something, um, I would not like to talk about it here, but then... Okay, course, uh, fantastic. At least you, you know, you, course, you know. Yeah, because for, for a lot of footballers, especially, you know, African, you know, they keep playing and things going, and all of a sudden, you know, football stops. I mean, something you've been doing for years, for a very, very long yeah, time, yeah. you know. So, 10, 15 so years. It's, you know, it's finally difficult. They, they can't do anything. Yeah, because they are... What do you call it? Because of the comfort zone, you know, even mm. thinking about the, ne the near future, you're you you earning good money. Um, but then I think it's very important, like I was saying, um, thinking about the future. Um, it's very yes. vital. It's very, very vital. Um, for me, I've always, I've always liked to, to learn, to study new things, you know. Um, I'm always open, you know. I'm even trying to, to learn French. Um, even though I, I learned it in school, um, you know. Um, I, I, I've always want. I, I've been the person who, who always want to, you know, um, progress. You, you, know, some, you know, yeah. So, um, of course, I'm thinking of doing something new, um, learning something. So, not even as a footballer, then probably in my in my later ages of football, mm -hmm. I, I will start something. You know, um, of course, being into football, um, I would love to still continue. On. Um, so that one is that one is their standard, you know. Course, footballers, experience, you know. Um, things, yeah. That one is. I, I think I was I was talking to my dad about this the other day, and um, yes, mm -hmm. um, with, with experience you 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 get you get this automatically, but then of course you need to learn new things too. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, that's a brilliant one. So, how many languages do you speak? Well, I think now I, I'll say four. Okay, which ones? Um, that's Spanish, English, um, you know, in, in my local language. Is it that tree? Yeah, we have the tree and then the ga. You the know, ga. I'm, I'm okay. actually an Akan, and you know that Akans we speak tree, but then I, I grew oh. up in in the capital city, so of course um, I speak the ga. And oh. I'm even more okay. than tree because I, I've lived all my life in in the great okay in the, in the capital city I've that's interesting in, in teaching and um, i like to give shout outs to all my guys in teaching teaching on what you know um, okay I, i've seen i've seen a lot of a lot of comments there but then i i can't yeah. reply i can't reply most yeah. of them um shout out to all of them I, I know a lot of them are watching are watching are watching that's good yeah. that's brilliant so i mean okay but let's go back to um this era of quarantine now, how are you keeping sane? <laughs> you know, how, you, you know, what, does your club have exercises? What was that? Because here in the UK, we have different clubs. What they do, they get the physios to, uh, you know, or the trainers yeah, to be yeah. in touch with the players. You know, right from, because we, at almost, we have players in the academy system. And what they're doing is, they, you know, they get, they give them programs to do, and then to the first team, um, they get the trainers to sort of get everybody together. They can see each other on the screen and do the training, you know, different thing. What what sort of method 
is your team using the and how is the how are the Mexican clubs you know coping during this era, this lockdown era? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I think one thing a lot of people don't know. Um, I think the Mexican most. Uh, I think the Mexican league is very professional. You know, very very professional. I mean, mm. um, with all factors, um, they are very professional. You know, so for for my team, I think the first week we used to have video calls. You know, together to to be training. I think it started, I think, for like three days. But then later, you know, because we were thinking this wasn't going to last long and we were thinking we, we would definitely get back to play soon, but then they got to know it wasn't going to end anytime soon. So they started, mm. you know, sending us um, training um, training programs, you know, that we, we can be doing at home. Um, we were provided with materials, you know, to be training at home even I know some of us were some of the guys were given by those who didn't have um, this bicycle at home okay. they, they could okay. be using it and all that so yes so we have we have our routine that we, we will be doing daily um, and I think that's what that, that's what is keeping me fit you know um, as an African player you know you can you can't just stay here without doing anything at all so, yeah of course I'm what's the and, Okay, sorry. What's the weather like there? Is it what sort of? Are you in the summer? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it spring? Yeah, you know, you know, it's hot here. Um, <clears throat> we have certain cities that 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 is very cold, but then now mm. in Mexico, I think it's 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 the hot season, and it's very hot. If you can, I don't know if I can, if I can have some some view of the, you know, okay. it's very hot. And wow. It's, yeah. Okay. What's the time? There's around two p.m. or so, it's, isn't it? Yeah, it's almost two p.m. It's it's one okay. before now, but then mm-hmm. um, it's very hot here. You know, um, there are certain cities, like I'm saying, there are cities that are that that are cold. Um, normally cold, normally always cold, but then I think this is the hot season. So I don't know. I don't know what what the weather is like there, but then. Um, mm. Probably here in Querétaro, when it's when it's cold, yeah, like in December, December, November, early early January, um, yes, it's not okay, cold. okay, okay. What about the food? What's the food like? Uh, well, I you know, Mexico Mexico has, <laughs> come on, yeah. I wouldn't like to talk about food here. Yeah, Mexico has the best food. Come on, yeah. I think you you need you need to come here and then try. Yeah, yeah, I was, you know, I was, I was thinking about it because um, I think sometimes last year I was in, um, I was in California. We we're talking yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. And I was, yeah, and I was supposed to even come um, on the 16th of March. I was supposed to be in um, California again, but then they cancelled the flight. So we have to work something out, and we can see how you know, even if it's a game or two, I can come and watch and see the city and and what like. Mexico, because we see a lot of things in movies, you know. Um, yeah. I've been to different parts of the world. Um, what we see or what we hear is usually the opposite sometimes. You know, just tell us what's Mexico like for you in, in a nutshell. How do you see Mexico? What sort of, you know, pe- what, what, how are the people like, the culture, you know, the, you course. know, just different yeah. things. Yeah. You know, of course, in the news, in the movies, you know, they want to get a view, so of course they are not going to show you the good things. Well, a few people are going to show you the good things. Um, it's like it's just like in Africa, you know. Um, you know, people have different perspectives about That's Africa, right. but yeah. you know, that is not what it is. Um, even though it might have happened some time ago, but in Mexico, you know, people you know Mexico um, to be, you know, this drug dealing, you know, this killing of people and all this kind of stuff. But then, come on, um, I've been in Mexico for three and a half years, I, I've, you know, I've never experienced, I think I, I lived in Guadalajara for two and a half years. Mm-hmm. I, I'm getting to almost one year here. And then, you know, Mexicans are free. Very, I think they are, Mexicans are the, the, the best people you could, you could ever encounter in the world. Like, wow. no, no, I mean, I, I know this, I know this firsthand, because um, I remember when I, I've been to three World Cups in South Africa 2010, when I was going, it was different stories we were hearing. I spent 32 days there in South Africa yeah. for the, during the World Cup. I ended up going back for African Nations Cup. 
in 2013, which Nigeria won. Then second World Cup was in Brazil. We had different kind of stories, this and that. But then I, I went there, you know, from Porto Alegre, you know, to Brasilia, to Rio, you know, Sao Paulo, uh, yeah. different. But it was fun as well. Then came Russia. And of course, you know, what was going on in the media. I went to Russia and the World Cup twice. I went when Nigeria lost against Argentina. Was it against Argentina? Yeah. Uh, I came back a day or two after yeah. that. Then, and I went back and I, from quarter, I think from quarterfinals to the final. And it was fantastic. Went to different places. You know, so sometimes you need to actually go there, you know, to actually explain. So I just wanted you to touch the, that side of the story so that people yeah. can know that what Mexico is all about. And um, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, when I got, when I got the, the, the offer from Atlas, you know, that was mm. anyone I, I spoke to was like, hey, come on, Mexico. Hey, come on, Mexico. What are you going to do there? Like, but then, like I said, I did some investigations and then um, mm. Mexico is cool. Mexicans are free spirited people. You know, they are very, they're very open. You, you know, you can't compare people like the Spanish to, to the Mexicans, you know. Mexicans are very They speak open. Spanish, right? Mexico. Yeah, they speak Spanish, you know. But then they have, you know, it's a bit different. Um, mm. It's not like the Spanish, Spanish, Espanol, Espanol. But then it's the same thing, but then, you know, they speak. A bit. It's, it's just like, let's say, the English and then the, the Pigeon. You yeah. Know, so that's like, like Pigeon, right? It's something like that, but then, you know, they have certain words that they use. That, you know, you, 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 you never hear in Spain. Um, do you do you do you speak Spanish fluently? Can you yeah, conversate? Yeah. Like, of course. Of okay, course. that's that's a big plus. I I speak. You know, I played in Spain for almost four years, three and a half years, and then I've another three and a half years here. So, so yeah. Okay. Now, so. Spanish is now fluent okay. now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for coming on um, utmost um, the offline utmost review. Thank you so much for your time. I think we've been we've been on for about an hour now. I appreciate it. We have to do it sometime again. Of course, um, of just course, for course. you know, the, the last thing, what would you like to say to your fans, people in Africa, people in Ghana, you know, and to just footballers, your friends all over the world, what would you like to say to them? About, you know, well, I think going I'll, forward? Um, I'll give. I'll, um, I, I would like to thank them all for their support. You know. I've got a lot of supporters mm. from Ghana. I've got a lot of supporters from Spain now. Like I know there are a lot of people watching me from Spain, from Ghana, and then mm. and then now most of the most of the guys from from Mexico. And I think yeah, my guys, okay. my, my footballer friends who are coming up, I like them to to keep up with their okay. work. I think I've seen some. I've seen Yaya Boa. I've seen Chris Lefobi, my national teammates, yeah. who have commented there. Um, they should keep up with their good work, you know. They have a lot of people looking up to them. And yeah, so yeah, like I was saying, um, I think um, I urge them to keep on supporting. Um, okay. I know they've been there from, from day one. Um, there are a lot of people in, in Africa mm. who are even following my games in Mexico. I'd like to thank them for wow. all the support. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but, um, okay. We would like to I think, think there are okay. there's a brighter future. Okay. Um, there are more years ahead, and I keep on. I always keep on doing my best training, and then I know one day the um, the dreams of playing for the Black Stars, and then I know it will come. It will come to pass. Some people are, you have um, Daco Dalo Campo 007 They say you should come back to Granada. They want you back uh, in Spain <laughs> to Granada. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Dari Campo. Yeah, you know, like I was, I think, like I mentioned earlier, on, I have a lot of people. Yeah. Okay. Technical hitches from Instagram. Can you hear me? I hear yeah. Okay. I guess. Um, okay, you can hear me. We'll round it up here. Thank you so much for coming on 
um, this Insta Live um, offline utmost review. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. We wish you all the best now and the future. Um, stay safe. Stay blessed. Eat healthy. Exercise. And um, the sky is not even the limit. You, you go. You you achieve all your dreams. You know. All right. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>